Hi friends, today we will discuss about qualification and what is the qualification and what is the scope of the qualification, what is the approach for the qualification and what is the importance of qualification in our pharmaceutical industry and what is the qualification and a reference for the uh, qualification. There are mainly two guidelines are there for the qualification, WHO guideline uh, talks uh, given on guidance document about validation and qualification of systems uh, and they revised recently in the year 2018 and one more guideline ICHQ7 guideline is there uh, it is a GMP good manufacturing guideline for the API manufacturing and as per this ICHQ7 guideline there are 20 sections are there and 12th section talks about the validation in that 12th section again there is a subsection 12.3 it talks about the qualification of the equipments and systems as per this ICH Q7 guideline the qualification definition like uh, acts of proving and documenting that an equipment or system or its inserted systems are <clears throat> properly installed work correctly and actually lead to the expected results it means any instrument or equipment or facility which we are using for the manufacturing we have to ensure whether it is suitable for the intended use or not whether it is giving reproducible repeatable results or not in a consistent way and what is the scope of the qualification what are the equipments which we are using for the manufacturing and storage of the materials and all the instrument which we are using for the testing the samples and the utilities and uh, instrument systems all comes under the scope of the qualification for an example production equipments like reactors blenders micronizers and uh, uh, filters uh, these are comes under the examples uh, whereas in pro laboratory equipments and instruments like hplc gc uv kf ir and uh, polarimeter and so many examples balances movements these are all the systems and facilities will come under the qualification activity and what is the approach for the qualification and before going to know about the approach for the qualification we should categorize our equipment and instrument based on the impact on the final product quality suppose if there is a direct impact on the final product quality then you have to categorize your equipment as a critical equipment for example uh, reactors dryers blenders centrifuges and uh, hplc uv gc these are the systems which are directly contacting with that product and uh, if there is no direct impact on the product quality then you can categorize that equipment as a non critical equipment for an example utilities like scrubber uh, there is one uh, cooling tower, chilling plant, uh, vacuum system, uh, laboratory equipments like Sunikita, Cyclo Mixer, these are comes under the non-critical category. And what is the approach for the qualification? In uh, earlier stage, there are uh, four categories are there for the qualification. Those are design qualification, installation qualification, operational qualification and performance qualification. Later, the scenario was changed completely and now there are total seven steps for the complete qualification what are those urs user recommend specification dq design qualification and fat factory acceptance test and sat site acceptance test and iq installation qualification and oq operational qualification and pq performance qualification these are the seven steps we have to cover for the qualification activity let us see one by one what is a URS? URS is a document that provides, uh, it's a user requirement specification that provides uh, broad specification on the required equipment or system to meet the required standard and intended for the uh, suitable for the intended use. This DQ is URS documents shall be prepared by the user. It should cover all the requirements like technical requirements, operational requirements, utility requirements, GMP requirements, safety requirements and documentation requirements. Once you have finalized your URS document, once approved, then you have to submit to the uh, manufacturer or vendor. Here only two parties involved in the qualification, end user means who is taking the equipment and who is manufacturing the equipment, manufacturer or vendor. 
once finally the document your document you have to send to the manufacturer to make the repo, uh, equipment like uh, as you required after that you have to start your design qualification what is a design qualification design qualification is a document verification that a proposed design of the equipment or ancillary systems is in is suitable for the intended use and uh, it is uh, as per the and recommendations manufacturer recommendations as well as uh, urs document and this uh, dq report dq report shall cover all the uh, requirements which we mentioned in the urs document and dq shall be evaluated with respect to the urs document uh, in order to verify and ensure that uh, its ability to produce the outcome that meeting the required uh, specification once you have completed your dq then you have to go for a factory acceptance test this fat is not applicable for all the cases it is applicable for there is a suppose a specialized or new model of the equipment or system which is new in terms of technique and application then you have to go for this fat uh, and this fat not applicable for the uh, equ routine equipment which we already existing in the facility and this fat shall be performed by the user at the manufacturing site uh, with respect to the urs and all and this fat report shall be prepared by the manufacturer and vendor and the same document shall be evaluated and approved by the user uh, end user quality unit once you have completed the fat then you can uh, move that equipment to the location then your sad will start site acceptance test site acceptance test shall be performed by the user in order to verify uh, the received equipment is in controlled and intact condition this sat uh, shall be performed performed by the user and uh, in that sat report you have to verify name of the equipment uh, capacity of the equipment po drawing make and model supplier information uh, dq approved verification and uh, physical condition and technical events verification these are you have to verify thoroughly all the accessories all you have to verify if any damage any part problem is there you have to shout to the vendor to replace that part once you have completed your sat means uh, the equipment system is ready to move to the location where you have to install the equipment then your iq will start installation qualification installation qualification is nothing but it's a document verification that an equipment or system as installed or modified comply with the approved design and vendor recommendations and as well as user requirement specification and this iq report shall cover all uh, you have to verify approval of the oak uh, this one dq and identification of major components and accessories uh, installation checkpoints uh, identification verification of moc and utilities and identification of sop you have to verify in the iq your iq report will cover all the uh, these details once you have completed your iq installation qualification then you have to go for a operational qualification oq what is an operational qualification operational qualification is nothing but it's a document verification that an equipment or system as installed or modified can perform over an anticipated operating ranges before starting your oq you should have a sop for the equipment operation maintenance and calibration you should you know your all the associated instruments should be in calibrated state before going to oq and you have to train your people who are wants to operate the equipment in the oq and this oq reports shall cover all the aspects verification of sop calibration of the equipment instrument and the uh, equipment cleaning procedure and the pm calibration schedule fixing and the outcome of the oq study with the specified limits upon completion of your oq operation qualification you can go for a performance qualification what is a performance qualification performance qualification is nothing but it's a document verification that an equipment and its ancillary systems connected together can perform reproducibly and effectively with respect to the approved process method and specifications in the pq you have to select some batches 
to prove the consistency, reproducibility, repeatability of the equipment. You have to prepare a PQ protocol in detail. It should have the detailed execution plan as well as acceptable criteria and selection of the batches. And finally, your PQ report. PQ reports will cover all the selection of batches and the outcome of the execution and results and access criteria and data to be compiled and steps to be followed in case of failure and finally conclusion of the qualification. What is the conclusion of the qualification? Suppose you all the test cases and challenges are meeting found satisfactory then you can say your equipment is qualified then you can release that equipment to the routine uses upon completion of your approval uh, of the report PQ report from the quality unit suppose in case of any failure in the any test case or challenge then your instrument deemed to be failed in the qualification you should not release that equipment to the routine uses and you should go for a thorough investigation to find out the causes and reasons for the failure in the qualification and this is the overall uh, discussion concept about the complete qualification of an equipment system or instrument now let us see what is the rq it's a requalification if there is a part change or any major change in the equipment or you have relocated your equipment then you have to go for a requalification and this extent of requalification shall be based on the nature and significance of the change and uh, what are the recommendations we have mentioned in that our particular change control in requalification uh, mostly OQ and PQ is enough to complete the requalification if we have not relocated the equipment and this requalification is not applicable for the mobile equipment and finally it is a PPV Periodic Performance Verification What is a PPV? It is necessary to verify periodically whether your equipment or system or facility is, in a, is operating in a validated state of control and qualified state of control and in this PPV Periodic Performance Verification it should cover you have to verify the calibration history and uh, breakdown history and PM history and as well as you have to verify the qualification document, initial qualification document to verify in order to verify the adequacy with respect to the current regulatory requirements and as well as uh, audit inspection findings, uh, any recommendations that we have implemented or not. And this uh, PPV, uh, suppose the all the results uh, outcome of the PPV found satisfactory, then you can certify your equipment. Uh, uh, my equipment is in a valid state of control, qualified state of control, you can certify. Suppose outcome of the PPV observed some deficiencies and discrepancies, then you have to go for a requalification or go for a dismantling or decommissioning of the equipment based on the nature and problem of the uh, discrepancy during this PPV. And the schedule for the PPV. For all the critical equipment, you have to go for a PPV once in a three years and non-critical equipment once in a five years, you have to go for this PPV. This is the overall concept about qualification and finally, we have to discuss about what is the importance of qualification in our pharmaceutical industry. And this qualification is a basic requirement and it is a USFDA and other regulatory requirement and before going to start your process validation or any validation that equipment system and facility should be in a qualified state of control and uh, uh, suppose you want to submit a DMF for the generic molecule or new drug application for the uh, new molecule then you have to uh, verify your instrument equipment and personal facility all within the qualified state of control and uh, and as a user you should ensure your equipment system or facility is capable to produce the results within a uh, repeatable reproducible manner in a constant way that is our responsibility otherwise uh, the product quality you cannot ensure your product quality so this is the overall topic and importance of the qualification uh, i hope you all understand my topic today's topic uh, we will discuss number of topics in future regarding change control management, risk assessment and CAPA, what is the CAPA and what are the guidelines for the stability and ICH guidelines we will discuss in the future classes. Thank you for watching my videos. I hope you all are watching my previous videos and please subscribe my channel and forward to your colleagues and friends. They will have some knowledge.
thank you for watching have a nice day happy learning thank you